This is one of the important videos on Euro Channel because I will explain how erections work. I am well aware that many of you may just not be interested and will not watch it because you want easy life hacks on how to improve your erections. However, if you don't know anything about human physiology, you will believe any absurd trick anyone is presenting to you. Just take your car for example. If you don't know anything about it because you don't care and you just want it to work, you will be more vulnerable to questionable advice. If you don't know anything about engines, maybe you would fall for advice telling you that you could go 200 miles per hour with your small Japanese car that's got 70 horsepower if only you would add some coconut oil whenever you fill up at the gas station. It's the same with the human body. If you don't know anything about penile physiology, then you might believe that rhino horn will boost your erections. Which is complete nonsense, by the way, just in case you didn't know that. My name is Stefan Bundrock. I'm a board certified urologist and sexologist. In my videos, I will give you evidence based information on urological conditions and sexological topics. I was recently approved to become a YouTube health partner, which is a mark of excellence signifying reliable medical content. So if you like my channel, please subscribe. So how do erections work? Basically, it's a complex interplay between the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, arteries and veins, and the anatomical structures of the penis. Let's start with the penis. It consists of three sausage-like structures containing erectile tissue. These are called the two corpora cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum. They all consist of smooth muscle. The cavernous bodies are most important for penile rigidity during erections. The spongy erectile body ends in the tip of the penis, the so-called glands, and the urethra runs through it. It is also important because an isolated erectile issue with a glands can cause problems during intercourse despite well-functioning cavernous bodies. If you want to know more about cold gland syndrome, you should watch this video. During erections, arterial blood flow into the erectile tissue will increase dramatically. There are two distinct situations in life when this happens. Either you are sexually aroused or you are dreaming in your sleep. It is also possible to initiate erections by touch and there is a distinction between so-called psychogenic and reflexogenic erections. I recently uploaded a video about it. All of this is only happening if there are functioning nerves which forward the information. The main responsibility lies with the parasympathetic nervous system. If all of this is working properly, nitric oxide will be released and will act upon the erectile tissue in a very distinct way. Small channels in the membranes of the smooth muscle cells will open and an exchange of ions will take place. This will trigger the inflow of blood. Now you should pay close attention. How does the body revert this process? It is done by an enzyme by the name of phosphodiesterase 5. When PDE5 kicks in, the exchange of ions is stopped and baseline conditions are re-established. So what do you think will happen if we had the chance to block PDE5? Exactly. The erection would continue. Do we have the means to do that? Absolutely. The first drug to achieve this effect got known to the world by the name of Viagra. Okay, there is one more question to be answered. How is blood kept inside the penis? Nature has solved this problem in an elegant way. Surrounding the cavernous bodies, there is some kind of rigid envelope. It is called the tunica albuginia. Just underneath it, there are the penile veins. The fundamental difference between arteries and veins is that arteries carry blood into the organs and veins carry it away from the organs back to the heart. So with erections, we want these veins to close so that the blood can stay inside the penis. Here is where the tunica albuginia comes in. With rising pressure inside the cavernous bodies, the veins get compressed against it, so they will be closed off. The rest is physics. The rising pressure inside the penis 
will make it elongate and eventually rise. In the next video, I will explain the role of hormones and the brain when it comes to erections. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.